Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you all to this webinar session, ECG Basic and Beyond, organized by ECG Study Group. Last week, on the 21st February, it was International Mother Language Day. And on that occasion, we have declared a ECG quiz contest. We have given 10 ECG quizzes and more than 50 participants participated in the quiz contest. And Today, we'll discuss these 10 ECGs on the first part of the session. And the next part, we'll declare the winners of this ECG quiz contest. The winners of the ECG contest will get a book, a textbook of basic and advanced electrocardiography, which is, which is written by Professor Boren Chakraborty sir. And we are happy to declare that Professor Boren Chakraborty sir is with us. As usual, we have got our course directors, Professor M. Atharali sir and Professor Abdul Wadud Chaudhuri sir with us. We have got our international advisors, Dr. Rafiq Ahmed sir, Chaudhuri H. Hassan, and our other panelists, Dr. Abdullah Jamil, Dr. Nahuma, and Dr. Govindapal. At the beginning of the session, may I request Professor M. Atharali sir to say a few words about today's session? No, no, Chaudhuri, Abdul Wadud Chaudhuri. Uh, Chaudhuri? Is He's not yeah, so what he's is I think uh, uh, Sir, Atta, sir, please unmute yourself. Good evening, dear participants, honorable panelists. Nearly after one year, on the occasion of International Mother Language Day, the ECG study group has arranged a ECG quiz contest just to see how our participants react and what is our actually uh, how much of our benefit that is uh, we have given to our participants. So this is just to see uh, actually our dear participants interest about the ECG contest. Today, I am very much happy to welcome our honorable panelist, particularly Professor Abdullah Al Shafi Mozumdar sir, he will join soon. We have also Professor Abdul Wadud Choudhury, Dr. Abdullah Al Jamil, and also we are very much happy to declare that is Professor Boren Chakrabarty with us. And finally, we have got the international faculties panelist, Professor Dr. Rufi Ahmed sir, Choudhury Hassan and Professor Urun Maski from the Nepal. And finally, I like to thanks Dr. Ashib Jaman Tushar for helping us to prepare the UCC quiz contest I am, I am also grateful to our Rofi Khamed sir, who has actually edited all the ECGs, given a lot of time to prepare these uh, ECG quizzes. So dear participant, we'll just proceed to our next session. That is the ECG quiz contestation. About the design of the quiz contestation, Dr. Firoz will tell something about, the, about the, how will the uh, today's program will run. Dr. Firoz. Thank you, sir. Uh, in the first part of the session, as I have already mentioned, We'll discuss the 10 ECGs. We'll uh, ask the participants, one of the participants to take part in the discussion, how they interpreted it. And the, we'll also take opinion from a, uh, one of our panelists regarding this ECG and also opinion from our international advisors, Dr. Rafiq Ahmed sir, Chaudhuri H. Hassan sir, uh, Professor Orun Maski, all of them will make comments on this ECG. 
So may I request um, Rivu to bring I some participants to, to the yes, panelists? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to share the slide. Uh, yeah. slide. Okay, sir. I'm in. I'm, I'm taking some of the participants and the panelists. Okay, okay, and then I'm going to share the slide so we can go from there, right? Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, shall we show the first ECG? Yes, sir. You, you can go for the first. Okay. No, no. Show the you decide who is going to discuss. Uh, no, no. At the hat. Sir. Sir, sir, we have make a plan, sir. That is one of our participants will first discuss the ECG. Then yeah. our then our one of the panelists. And finally, you happy sir, Urun Maski will be the final uh, discussion. So uh, we'll call the uh, uh, one of our pay, participants from our okay. participants. Uh -huh. uh, I think one of our participants. Yes. Ye yes, uh, three participants are in the panelists now, sir. Bud mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Buddhadev Ganguli. Otonu Dash. Okay. And Muk Dr. Mukul Chandrapal. Okay. Uh, now uh, we can start discussion about the ECG. May I request Dr. Buddhadev Ganguli uh, to uh, can you can you open your camera? Can you show yourself, Dr. Buddhadev? Video on. Can you make your video on, Dr. Buddhadev? Are you with us? No. Dr. Mukul Chandra? Dr. Atunu? So I, uh -huh. We can ask one of our guys from Nepal. Oh, no, Manish Karela? Manish Karela? Manish Karela, are with us? Manish, no. Dr. Mukul Chandra, Dr. Buddhadev Ganguly. Uh, sir, Dr. Manoj Koyala, I have uh, brought him in the panelist. So, there, there He's here. here. Dr. Manoj, can you can you uh, or you can bring Arjun on camera on? Arjun Buddha Thaki. Dr. Manoj. Manoj. Man Manoj. Manoj, you are not here. Arjun. Okay, we got Dr. Mukul Chandrapal. Please unmute yourself. Dr. Mukul. Arjun. Okay, yeah. we got Dr. Mukul Chandrapal. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Dr. Dr. Mukul Chandrapal. Sir. Okay. Uh, you have seen this ECG. ECG number one. What is your opinion? What was, what was your interpretation? Can you read the ECG for us? Can you know the format which number one. Describe. What yes. is your opinion? What, 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 this is what, 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 uh, say, sir, yes, uh. we can hear you. Please go on. Acha, Firuz. Chat. Actually, uh, Mukul Chandra, actually, Mukul Chandra has uh, given the final opinion that is this is the normal ECG and this is our metric from the study group to our participant. Actually, many of the times, Professor Wadu Chaudhary and finally Dr. Rofi Gamet sir, actually what wants to tease our participant that we have to comment sequentially like this. That is Mughal Chandrapal, you can see that is you have to first comment the rate of the ECG. You see that is the rate. Sir, 
can some both of the two guys can comment now arjun yes. and manoj then we can discuss okay 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 prabhu can you dr. make dr. Manoj, you can you can you are dr manoj unmute yourself and you can also comment he is saying he is trying to unmute but is not coming try to maintain the format we have respect that is the way sinus freedom pua pure space sp this you can see a prescribe dr manoj, manoj speak he is saying he cannot talk Monoz and Arjun is saying they are trying to unmute, but they are not able to talk. Doctor, doctor, and Monoz is unmuted. Yeah. Can so Monoz, can you talk now? Monoz, Arjun, here we are. I mean, hello. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yeah, Arjun, I can hear you. Hello. Yeah, Arjun, can now talk yes, sequentially. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, no. professors. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a twelve-year ECG of twenty-seven years old female uh, with normal calibration and normal speed. That's twenty-five and ten millivolts. The rate is uh, about seventy-five uh, beats per minute. Uh, uh, the rhythm is sinus, and uh, uh, the uh, P wave morphology is normal. Uh, QRS axis is uh, normal as well. Uh, Uh, but the, there is a slight, uh, uh, there is a poor R wave progression. So because uh, the uh, the ecophysic lead is at uh, V five, otherwise the ECG is normal. Thank you, Dr. Uh, now may I request Professor M. Atharali sir to make some of comments on this. Thank you, Monos, for your uh, excellent introduction. But I think we have to be actually. What is our What is our objective of learning is that we have to go sequentially as per as per principle. That is a rate is about sixty six. We have told seventy five. That is sixty six per minute. Rhythm is sinus as evidenced by the positive P wave before the QRS complex, particularly in the lead two. TR interval is one sixty millisecond. That is from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS complex. Then QRS. Axis of the QRS is normal as evidenced by the positive QRS in lead one and AVF, and the duration of the QRS complex is about 80 millisecond. Then the ST segment is normal, and QT interval from this ECG within the normal range as it is less than the uh, 50 percent of the RR interval, and there is no chamber hypertrophy. So this is the criteria of the normal ECG. and this should be imprinted in our memory that is that this will be the basic for diagnosing the other ecg this is the normal ecg we have to keep in mind what is called the normal ecg and rubik sir always likes to see this ecg first and uh, i think rubik sir will comment that is about this uh, ecg about our uh, participants comments rubik sir thank you so uh, as, as this is actually the ecg that is the commonest ecg in clinical practice 90% of ecg that we will see in clinical practice will be this one and if we can identify we have identified 90% so at first impression this is normal ecg but then we have to justify why it is normal ecg and everybody said sinus rhythm sure there is a p wave before qrs complex so it's an atrial rhythm and the p is upright in lead 2 3 avf and that makes it that is coming from the top part of the atrium one of the issue that you have to remember that you also have to look at lead 1 why if a rhythm is coming from left atrial appendage it will be upright in 2 3 avf but it will be negative in lead 1 so that's why it's important you look at 2 3 avf and also quickly look at lead 1 so it's sinus rhythm and then we look at rate i never like to look at approximate rate uh, if you can can you see my arrow Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. Um, let me get the pointer. If I measure with these two RR interval, the rate will be a little faster. If we make it here, it will be a little slower. So we, I like to count all of them, and there are eleven ones. So rate is sixty-six bits per minute. And let's look at the numbers. And we can always say approximate number, but then it life becomes approximate everywhere. I don't like that. If you measure here, the trick to measure is find a caliper or find where the QRS. So I can see here that the QRS is starting from here, 
And if I go backward, my PR is up to here. And that makes it four boxes and a little bit more than that. So it's 190 millisecond PR interval. Um, and that's normal. Um, and then QRS duration from here, you can see that a little bit over two boxes. That makes it about 90 millisecond. And then QT interval from the beginning of the QRS to the end of that T wave is 420 millisecond. Please practice this. Approximation is never good. We never give money to the shopkeeper. Oh, by the way, you take 49 taka. We always count it to the penny. So likewise, in real practice, we should practice this um, until we sharpen our eyes enough. And then look at the QRS axis. Lead one is positive, so it's on the right side. And lead AVF is positive, so it's between zero and 90 degree. And if you want to be a little bit more accurate, if you look at lead three, it's here. And lead three is negative. So it is between zero and 30 degrees. So if you want to be precise, you can go by that. So it, the axis is between zero and 30 degrees. And then of course, um, we looked at other things. We looked at the voltage um, is normal. If we, look, if we should comment on something on this ECG, that is poor alloy progression from V1 to V5, V4. Uh, why that is most probably it's a female patient. Sometimes the, the leads are not placed a little properly. And that is probably the most reason. And then we look at the ST segment is normal. Uh, T wave is upright. And so this is a normal ECG. So yes, always normal ECG at the first thing, thing then we can we have to justify why it is normal. Thank you. Thank you, Zikbai. <laughs> yeah. There is an U wave. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But this is normal U wave. Yeah, yes. this is normal even. Yes. This is exactly. normal even. But the thing is that if we are doing this exam, then probably I would put most scores on the UA because it is important to notice that this is an upright UA without probably any consequence in this patient. But this yes. is important to recognize. Fantastic. Thank you. So one of the things that we are going to do today is because when you look at a competition, uh, if I give normal ECG, then we have to look at, as Hafiz mentioned, we have to look at all the points that did somebody pay attention to all the uh, features of this ECG. And that will be important to differentiate between our eyes. And Rubik, I, don't, I, I know you don't like the cricket as much as I do. You don't give a dot ball in the first ball of the over, uh, of the first innings. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I were setting the questions, I would have said this in the middle of the exam. Make sure I add something? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Sir, please. Yes, please do. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. In fact, somebody was telling regarding this UA, these UA UAs are absolutely normal. But only thing is that the small UA may be very important if it is inverted in V1, V2, and V3. Because inverted POFs in the leads V1 to V4 indicates LED obstruction. And another one normal. normal. But only thing is that yeah. the small UA may this be is very normal. This is absolutely it normal. It's inverted in V1, V2, and V3. Because inverted yeah. POFs in the lead V1 to V4 indicates LED of this. And another one normal. normal. But only thing is that the small UA may be very normal. Um, there's a lot of one echo. important thing is that if the, this age of the patient is 27 and she is a female. So we know that this is, is normal. But if this is, is it normal, because this patient has got definite poor ROA progression from V1 to V4. And that's, we must, uh, the students must know that, what is the transition zone? How you define this, the low, this poor ROA progression? The transition zone is V3. If the ROA amplitude in V3 is less than three millimeter, it indicates the poor ROA progression. And another thing is that if this is, this is apparently looks that that is positional change, but we know that because this is a 27 years old lady, I think it looks like that. So this one is very important. This looks like say somewhat like clockwise rotation of the heart. If you see that there is very poor ROA progression, even the transition zone has been moved to the V6. Only in the V6, the ROA is uh, uh, bigger than the S wave. So it uh, looks like somewhat the uh, clockwise rotation of the heart. But in this 20 CPS here, uh, 27 years old lady, this is, is normal. But 
we have to think though, whether the patient has got all the anterior infarction, if this patient's age is more than 60 or there are multiple coronary risk factor, we must think about it. Can I add something? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Look at also the T weapon lead tree. This is inverted. It doesn't mean anything. Unless you have a, a T wave inversion as well in other inferior leads, either lead two or FEF or all of or both of them, along with the inverted T in three, it won't matter. Single Q or single T inversion in lead three doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Thank well, you, sir. Can I make a just quick comment? Yes, when I look at an ECG, I usually do not look at the age of the patient because I have seen patients with acute MI at the same age of 27. So, but when we see the poor RF progression, we should go through the differential diagnosis that uh, uh, Boren mentioned, that it can be counterplocus rotation, it can be ischemia, it can be just lead position, especially in females. The lead position is, is very, very it's common. Down or more so in Bangalore, either down or up, one or the other. Either it will be placed too low or too high. And this happens. Um, thank you. Govik Bhai, uh, as always, I, I, I say exactly opposite what you say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I look at the EKG, I, I read almost, when I'm in the hospital, I read about 130 EKGs a day. But what I do, I... I go to the conference, I read the EKGs first. I look at everything in the EKG. The patient's age, where is the patient? Is it trauma or neurosurgical ICU or MICU or CBCU? And then I look at everything of the patient. And when I give it, and including one thing, I like the uh, doctor from Nepal and I tell my fellows, excellent job that you looked at the calibration and the speed. Uh, and you introduce that way. Excellent point. And the second thing is that intervals, the, the computer is very good in intervals and axis, but not the morphology. So there is no reason not to look at those. You know, heart rate, you don't need to calculate. Look at this. Pay attention to the intervals and everything. So I am telling you exactly the opposite, Dr. Ravikbhai is saying. Ravikbhai is purist. I'm contaminated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, no question, I appreciate. But what happens is that I have, there was a patient in 1991, I was working in the emergency room. Patient was tossing around, patient 22 year old, everybody thought there's a drug addict and nobody even looked at the EKG. When I looked at the ECG, ECG had ST depression in V1 to V6, lead 2, 3 AVF. We took the patient to the cath lab, had tight stenosis of LAD, um, left main, and RCA. So, I mean, absolutely right. I mean, look at the finding and then look at the clinical scenario of the patient. No question about it. Thank you. Okay, next one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, this, is, this is the number two. Uh, may I request Dr. Hiru Al Amin. Are you with us, Dr. Hiru? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Okay. Uh, can you read this ECG for us? Sir, uh, this is a 12 lead ECG with uh, normal calibration with normal spread. And uh, there is a uh, rate is about uh, 70. And uh, there is a left axis deviation. And uh, PR interval is uh, normal. And uh, QRS is white more than 120 milliseconds. And uh, there is a notching uh, in one and LVL. And uh, there is also a V1 uh, uh, widening of the uh, QRS and uh, V6 uh, upright uh, QRS is widening. So ECG diagnosis, this is an uh, LBB type uh, ECG. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, may I request Professor Abdul Wadud Choudhury, sir, to make comments, sir? Uh, Hiru has a beautifully uh, initial presentation is very good. Now, look at the uh, our, our system. Whenever you are describing, 
if we can follow the system again, the rate is 72 beats per minute, the rhythm is sinus, regular, and PR interval is normal. We can charge code that possibly the P waves apparently normal. The QS complex show LPPP morphology. The ST segment is no, uh, as apparent is normal. The T wave is quite all right. But with LPPP morphology, the T wave should have been inverted in one AVL56 at at least B6. It's not there. And in a 67 year old female person, that should be considered significant. There is likely to be primary T wave changes. And I would be asking whether the patient have any chest pain episode or anything like that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Rafik, sir, do you want to make any more comment? No, I, I would like to ask Hafiz. Hafiz, are you with sir. me? Yeah, Rafik. I mean, there is a lot of, I mean, in every time we see left bundle, right bundle, we worry about is the patient, is something terrible going to happen to this patient? Right. Uh, any comment on this bundle branch and structural abnormality or ischemia issue? Um, any concern regarding mortality of this patient? Since you asked me that um, when I teach the EKGs, philosophically, we teach the EKGs in the classroom, but EKGs are like, something that we should recognize because whether you are in front of a tiger or an elephant, or you are in front of a, a dummy, you need to be very careful because if you're in front of a tiger, you have split seconds to decide. So it's very important. And that's why you need to see the tiger and the, and the fish. If it is a fish, call the fish a fish. If it is tiger, call the tiger a tiger. And that's why it's important. And I like this title that EKG and beyond. We are clinicians. We encounter EKGs and we face clinical situation. So if you are seeing an animal in Sundarban and it is a tiger, you have a split second to recognize. Then you don't go through the whole algorithm, but you need to be familiar with this. That all processes, what Professor Adu Chaudhary said, all processes should be processed in very split seconds. So therefore, the EKGs, many of these, should be in the brain stem, not in cerebral cortex. So that's why I, I, I that's how I train the fellows. Here, Ravik Bhai said, okay, this is a lip bundle. He is absolutely right. But is there anything that says that it is a tiger in front? So is there anything ominous? For that, first thing you need to realize that I'm telling in front of the, in the, in the practical part, are you seeing this EKG in a zoo? or in Sundarban. If it is in, in a zoo, that means you're in an office setting, patient is asymptomatic, don't worry. Don't call the ambulance for lip bundle and, and acute coronary syndrome. But if you are in the jungle, and then you need to be careful. Does, does the animal move? Does it look like tiger? So what we need to know is that whether there is any garbosa criteria to indicate that acute coronary syndrome going on. And for that, you have the patient in front of you. Now, if it is in the, in the office setting, another question comes in, lip bundle. If you look at the premium data, the lip bundle has poor prognosis compared to right bundle, which is probably has no prognostic implications down the line. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Afid. I think it's a very valid point. If it is right bundle, we can mostly ignore it. But if it's left bundle, we need to just I mean, we should not panic, call ambulance, but we need to pay attention to it a little bit. And then Wadud pointed out something that lead one in AVL should have been inverted and that's positive. That's unusual. That doesn't mean, again, I'm going to call ambulance and the patient to the hospital, but I need to take a real thorough history and really investigate this. Field. Why is there a discrepancy in this? So these are the clinical things that we are trying to teach, not only reading the ACD plus beyond, as Hafiz mentioned, that beyond what it is. Thank you. Next one. Next one. Uh, this is the ECD number three. Dr. Kamal Hussain will be with us. Dr. Kamal. 
Can you unmute yourself? Sir, Kamal. Sir, Assalamualaikum, yes. sir. Okay. Can you read this issue for us? What is your what was your sir, This is the this is the 12 bit ECG showing there is a normal uh, uh, normal standardization and paper is not showing here but uh, there is a heart rate is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, heart rate is 50 beats per minute rhythm is sinus rhythm and the what, what, what the rate heart rate the, the, the heart rate is 1 2 3 4 5 6 50 beats per minute no six times <laughs> Um, six. It's written in the ECG. You can, you can, you can read the, it is written heart rate 46. That is the way. Yeah, fine. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, uh, there is a normal P OF, P OF, uh, here, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. PR interval is uh, 200 millisecond. QRS complex is 90 millisecond, and the uh, uh, and QRS T uh, uh, QT interval is um, one to 10, 11, 4, 15, uh, uh, 12, uh, 480 and, and 480 millisecond, and there is a T inversion in the lead D1, D2, D3, B4, B, uh, B, uh, B3, B4. So my easy diagnosis is uh, uh, most probably in entry ischemia, sir, and sinus rhythm. Sinus what? Rhythm, but rate is? Rate is 46. So, sinus uh, sir. Sir, can I add, add, describe something about this? Uh, sir, I can come. I will come to you later. May I request Dr. Abdullah Jamil sir to make some comment? Uh, <clears throat> he mentioned the rates and uh, all the morphology of pures and uh, okay, but he missed. Uh, there are some humps at the end of each tube in all the leads. Probably, uh, if I consider this as a P wave, then every alternate P wave was not conducted. Uh, though PR interval is fixed in uh, before the QRS complexes, and the non-conducted and conducted PP intervals are almost regular. So most likely it is two is to one uh, at the ventricular block. Badut. Badut bhai. Uh, I always say to my students, please pay attention to lead one. If you keep attention to it, if you get a jot to it, it will give return you make something. Look at lead one. P, Q, R, S, T. There is something then. And what is that? It looks like the next P. Is it two is to one? Is it P wave that's not conducted? Look down the line. The same wave is present across the board. And it is, it looks like the previous P wave or the subsequent P wave. So that is two is to one. Again, he missed another point. There's right bundle branch morphology. Is yeah. there anything else? Going down, you find Left out. Texas. It's QRS complex is upright in lead one. It's down in lead two and three. So there's left axis division. That means there's also left anterior hemiplot. That means the patient have at the level of uh, two is to one AP block along with RPPP and left anterior hemiplot as well. Is there anything else? There is also T wave inversion. Where? It is uh, in V1, V2. But with RBBB, we are expecting that. That's not part of anything ischemic or something else. It's part of the right bundle branch morphology, secondary changes. 
So what comes down, we have bradycardia, if you two is to one AV block with the QS complex also showing bifascicular block patterns. So there is bifascicular block with two is to one AV block with bradycardia. Thank you, sir. One of the things, what the, now the question, my question is being devil's hour. If I say, look, this is sinus bradycardia with the E wave, what is the problem with that? The thing is, so look at the whenever you are in doubt whether the, it is a P wave or not, go to V1. That will help, bail you out. Look at V1, there is a biphysic P wave. Look at the so called P wave that's not conducted. It's also biphysic. So that is actually P, P wave, it's not an E wave. That helps you out to differentiate it from E wave. Can I yes, make sir. a point, sir? Yeah, thank you. Thank the you. Well, so we're trying to make a point that look, when there is bradycardia, I always look for a second P wave. It can be true sinus bradycardia. Second, I saw something which Dr. Wadud mentioned, and it is a little too sharp for the E wave. But then again, also look at lead V1. It looks exactly like the, uh, the other P wave. So that's two to one. And then, of course, other thing is that it um, has right bundle, left anterior fascicular block, and that makes it more likely. This becomes very difficult when you have left bundle. If the rate was a little faster, then the P wave then will fit inside the T wave. That will make it a little bit more difficult. But unless we keep a high degree of suspicion, we will have problem. The problem is this patient's symptom was the exertional shortness of breath. Not a big deal. But we had a situation where this ECG was missed, not this patient. Patient had intermittent two to one heart block and patient then went to the operating room for a gallbladder surgery and arrested in the operating room. So that can have serious clinical consequence. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Rovik bhai. Yeah. U wave, U wave would not appear exactly the time of P wave. <laughs> so yes. The timing is, timing is impeccable. It, it yes. maps out. And, yes. and then you know a person by the company it keeps. This two to one heart block, the company is bad, right bundle and left axis. So, so this company is bad, so this is a bad EKG. I mean, so the whole point is that, I mean, Hafiz, me, Wadu, the Baran, Professor Baran Chakri, everybody, we have so many years of experience and how did we do it? We can think in different direction at the same time and we are trying to do that as you are younger doctors who are here. Don't be frustrated that you, you made a mistake. Don't be frustrated that you couldn't recognize it, but it, it will come as you keep practicing it over the years, this will come. Uh, and all those things will fit in place. Thank you, Hafiz. Sir, we can move to next one. I'd like to know previous one, sir. Previous one. Is there any uh, conducted uh, POA? Some PR interval is prolonged here, sir. Uh, in that case, RBB and left axis deviation, that means left anterior hemi block and first degree heart block, tripesicular block. And uh, as we have seen in lead five, that is a two is to one heart block. As a whole, uh, our final comments, uh, which one is more appropriate, preferable? It is basically sinus rhythm with two to one heart, mobis to, most probably mobis to second degree heart block with uh, right bundle block, block left anterior fascicular block. Okay, thank sir. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next one, sir, please. Uh, Dr. Manos Koryala. Dr. Manos Koryala, are you with us? Dr. Manos? Anyone from Nepal? Oh. Dr. Hello. Manos, please unmute. Hello. Yes, Manos Koryala. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, am I audible? Am I audible, yes, sir? You are audible. You are audible, yes, please. Manos. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a, this is dual lead ECG. Uh, sir, this is dual lead ECG with, uh, normal standardization with heart rate of one, two, three, four, four and a half with heart rate of around uh, 70 beats per minute. Uh, 
rhythm is it is the best rhythm we can see the small spikes just before the qrs complex so it is the best rhythm and the morphology uh, the we can see the pr interval is within normal limit we can see the pfs in just before the each qrs complex the qrs is slightly widened because of pest rhythm and the morphology of the qrs is Uh, LBV type. So probably, sir, this is the pest rhythm. Uh, right ventricular is right ventricle is pest, sir. This is the uh, pest rhythm due to the patient is having the probably patient is having the pest maker in right ventricle, sir. Okay. Is it a dual right chamber or single chamber? Right ventricle, yes. Single chamber pest maker uh, is right ventricular is pest. Okay. May I request Rafik sir to make comments, sir? You, you did excellent interpretation of this ECG. And the fact that if you look at this ECG, in most of the leads, you cannot see a pacing spike except in V5, V4, V5, V6. That's yes. important. A lot of these new ECG machines have filtering system that they filter out these uh, pacing spikes. So I'm glad that you noticed that. And the fact that there is P wave before each QRS complex, that means there is AV synchrony. And in yes. the, yeah. the pacemaker in present, it must be a dual chamber pacemaker. So please, your diet, if you tell me this is a ventricular pacemaker, I will take it because you did a wonderful job. But the, because there is P to QRS relationship, it must be a dual chamber pacemaker. And my report will be atrial sensed ventricular pace rhythm. And once we have ventricular pace rhythm, we don't have any further comment about the QRS complex or morpho or ischemia or anything, but you did care. You did wonderfully that it's a right ventricular pacing because it's a left bundle morphology type. Thank you. Sir, can I add something? Yes, please. Uh, whenever you have left bundle morphology in one and FL, but in the chest deep, you have negative QRS complex across the board from V1 to V6. Always look out for spike in front of the QRS. It's a very characteristic of RP pacing. And then look out for synchrony, every synchrony. Is there any P wave, which is most obviously usually found in V1 uh, mostly. And if there is a P wave in there, that puts it in a dual chamber. Can I add uh, one point? Sure. Yes, sir. So in AVR, it is a tall R wave. It indicates the uh, pace, pacing from the apex of the Yes, I mean, that explains why V6 is negative, because yes, most of the cases in dual chamber pacing, you find the V6 should be also left bundle type. But here, as Wadud mentioned, it's all negative. That means the lead probably is very apical location. That's yes. why it gave this positive in uh, lead AVR and negative in V6. Thank you. Sir, what is the point in favor of the dual chamber, sir? Oh, because... There is P wave before each QRS complex, number one, and there is constant relationship. And the PR interval is constant. That means the atrium is being tracked by the ventricle. So that's why it is an atrial sense ventricular pace rhythm. Let's see. Thank, Thank you. you so the next one, uh, Dr. Wasek Faisal Rajib. Dr. Wasek Faisal Rajib. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Uh, sir, uh, I'm sorry for my voice because I'm COVID positive uh, since today. Uh, uh, sir, this is a 12 bridge surface C uh, with uh, a normal calibration and speed. Heart rate is about uh, 82 beats per minute. Uh, QRS axis is uh, normal. Uh, uh, it is a, there is a small spacing spike before every POF and QRS uh, duration is about uh, 94 millisecond except the, 
8 and 12 complex in the rhythm step. Uh, the PR interval is about one line of pure interval is about uh, 218 millisecond and QT interval is uh, around 400 millisecond. Uh, so my ECG diagnosis is, uh, it is a uh, pacing ECG probably with dual chamber pacemaker and there is atrial pacing and ventricular sensing except the eight and 12 complex, which is uh, there is uh, atrial pacing failure followed by ventricular pacing. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Radhi. It was a very good explanation. Uh, we have got Dr. Mukaddes Hussain Sadi. Dr. Sadi, can you make some comments on it? Probably no. Uh, Wadu, sir, can you make some comment? Yeah. Uh, Yes, make some comment if there is pacing failure or not. I would go for whether that uh, uh, work out uh, the pacing for the next beat occur at the proper time or not. If that is so, then the pacing has, actual pacing has occurred, but there is a PVC that has fused together before the conduction of the uh, atrial rhythm into the ventricle. Thank you, sir. Rafik, sir, you come, please. Thank you. Excellent. I mean, I'm impressed with this interpretation because, you see, this is the computer-generated report that I left it on purpose. And this is one of the things that is done in American Board of Entire Medicine cardiology exam that we, I, we give some machine interpretation to correct it. And this, he did not get biased by it. That's excellent. He noticed the pacing spike. That's wonderful. And as Odun mentioned, this white QRS is a ventricular premature beat. And this one, there is a pacing spike. But this pacing spike, if I put a caliper, it's exactly on time for the actual pacing. It just, it looks like that it is pacing the ventricle, but actually it's just pacing spike in the atria. The other small comment that I would probably make is low voltage in the chest lead. If you look at the chest lead, it's less than 10 millimeter in all the leads. So that comment should be made with non-specific T-wave. As I said that um, we will report it because this is not a page ventricular rhythm. Otherwise, I think excellent interpretation. And this is what I have done. I have expanded the, magnified the ventricular. Other physicians who did not notice this, that if you look at, when I magnify, I can see the pacing spike here. You see this V pacing spike, but excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next one, sir. Uh, Dr. Buddhadev Ganguly. Dr. Buddhadev. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there is uh, there is normal sinus rhythm PUA patient uh, uh, while the QRS complex. Uh, there is ST elevation is lead two, lead three, and lead ABL. And there is reciprocal ST depression one and ABL. Also, <clears throat> there is a, a there is ST depression is V one and V one and V two. There is and there is taller and upward uh, upward T wave in V two. And there is and there is ST there is slight ST elevation is V4. So my final diagnosis is uh, STMI inferior with uh, possible posterior extension with RV infraction. So we so we uh, so we do posterior side ECG and and right side ECG for final diagnosis. Thank you. Uh, May I request Professor Maskey, Professor Orun Maskey, your, your comments. Yeah, thank you. So what he has rightly said was, uh, then we can see our P waves in V6. So this is a ST elevation in inferior leads more on lead three than lead two. There's a reciprocal depression in one AVL and V2, V1, V1, V2 has ST depression. So this looks like a inferior and possibly post we'll have to do seven, eight, nine. And since there's a one and AVL ST depression, 
So this is a case of uh, three is more than two. It's a case of uh, possibly right when uh, inferior MI, RC occlusion. So we'll have to do right-sided chest leads and seven, eight, nine also. And Thank we'll you. have to assess hemodynamically status of this patient. So management wide, we need to give fluid in this patient and rule out RV infarctions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, Professor Barry, make a comment. Yes, yes. Sure, yeah. sir. In fact, this CD has got that definitely he has got signs signs of inferior MI. But only thing is that there's a, but just now Arun told this the ST elevation is more in late three than late two. It indicates that the inferior MI possibly due to RC occlusion. But if it reversed, if ST elevation is more in lead three, lead two, then lead three, it indicates that the LCX obstruction case of this inferior MI is due to RC occlusion. But from these 12 plate ECG, it's very difficult to comment on this RV in fact, until unless, unless we do the, the right sided leads, because only one sign that indicates this patient has got inferior MI uh, along with the RV infarction, only look at the V1. If V1 is down, then possibly there is no right ventricular infarction. It's a standard teaching. But if V1 is even isoelectric, even it indicates that the patient may have that RV infarct also. But until and unless we do the right side at least, the RV infarction comment is very difficult. But one thing is important, the ST depression in V1 and V2, look at. The HT depression is more marked in V2 than V1. It indicates that possibly the patient has got concurrent posterior infarction also. But we don't have the, um, uh, the uh, lead V6, V789. Until unless we do that, that one is very difficult. But this ECG looks like this patient has got inferior myocardial infarction, possibly with right vent, uh, sorry, possibly with posterior infarction, and possibly due to RC occlusion. Uh, can I add something? Yes, sir, please. We tell our students in the setting of acute ST elevated inferior MI, if ST segment in V1 is isoelectric or elevated, and in V2 it is depressed, where it is RV infarction, you have to confirm it by right side lead. But if there is ST depression in V1, V2, both, it's very unlikely the patient have uh, RV infarction. And Correct. You should do the posterior lead and confirm that whether the patient has posterior infarction extension. Thank you, sir. One yes, factor, sir. if you have a ST depression in one and AVL, it's unlikely to have a circumflex. It is yes. more pointing towards the right. You are right, sir. But if the proximal circumflex is occluded, it may give rise to ST depression in AVL. It's very proximal circumflex. You know, in that case, the OM branch, which supplies the lateral wall, high lateral wall, it's, that's the effect. Yeah, sir, V5 and V6 should get up the ST elevation yes. at, the, at that time, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Professor, we can move to the next one. Okay. So, we, hey, talked, hey, about hey. The corner, we talked about the coronaries. This is the left system of the patient. So, Ravik Bhai, uh, I'll tell you, um, because um, I was asked to have a comment. Um, yes. So, the, this is, it, apparently, you know, we look at the ST changes and the rhythm. So, rhythm is important. So, you say acute ST elevation in mind. So, I tell the fellows a few things, that when you look at the EKG, it is, and I like the fo this forum because it is not about EKG, it is EKG and beyond. And what is in the beyond? Beyond means, is it really ST elevation MI? This is very important. And if it is, are we dealing with just inferior ST elevation MI or there is a posterior extension? There is a RV infarct or there is some mechanical complication. So you need to look at the history, look at the physical exam. If the patient is not hypotensive, there is no heart murmur, there is no AI murmur. This is probably acute, uncomplicated inferior. And describe to me like that way. Don't waste your time doing 12 bit EKG and compromise the dot to balloon time. It's, but if you can do it, fine. 
but I'm not worried about that. This EKG does not indicate RV in fact by, 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 the, by the look of it. However, we need to make sure that there's differential. We had patients with inferior systolic murmur, VSD. We had patients with inferior with AI murmur, it's acoid aortic dissection going into the right coronary. So this is very important that just looking at this, you think that, oh, this is, let's move, evaluate as much as you can, because it is important to, to note that. Acute posterior without inferior is very rare, but that can happen. And we need to always look at the proportionate ST reciprocal or disproportionate ST reciprocal. If there is a disproportionate reciprocal, then you know there is more than just what it is. So it is very important that inferior looks like easier MI, but you may have some, something behind it that may come back and haunt you. So this is all brainstem reflexes, inferior, Look at the EKG, look at the patient history, physical, then the, there is any complication or impending complication. All these in totality have to be evaluated. And I don't really worry about this uh, Marriott description about you know, inferior ST, more uh, higher in two and SARC or RCA. We get burned out with this. Only time I look at this, if there is a really crunch time for dot to balloon that we are in the last. So should I go with the guide uh, prepared and then open it up so I meet the dot to balloon. Okay, Hafiz, I don't do angiogram, so make it simple for me. Two, three AVF as to elevation and the mirror image as to depression in V1 and V2, right? Yes. yes. That's a simple inferior microinfarct. Now, in this patient, there is one and AVL as to depression. So if I am looking at this patient, how do I explain? Give me two simple explanations for ST depression in one and AVL. So it could be a lateral ischemia going on that is large RCA, or it may be a dominant CERC with okay. OM. We don't know. But okay. that is less of an importance. Yeah, no, Important no, no. I'm just, no, no, no. Phil, I'm not trying to, just yeah, yeah. for simple mind. So we have to consider those two things, right? A big, big RCA or maybe circumflex supplying the info, one or the other. So this is the angiogram, comment on that please. I, I'm not the guy to comment on this angio. This is the LED. Yeah. We are plumbers, Rafik Bhai, we don't explain EKG. We just- No, 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 pick this picture. Yeah, now look at the picture. <laughs> tell for, me the, about the, for the brain power, we go to EP. <laughs> okay, tell me about this one. What do you think, Hafiz? So this is, looks like an RAO caudal view you can see the diaphragm, the spine on the right, and then you look at the left main at the beginning, and then you look at the front LAD, and then this circumflex comes in, and then we see high-grade stenosis in the circumflex giving rise to an OM branch. We are not able to see the cir prox circumflex very well. We may need a LAO caudal view, but there is also a, what looks like a high-grade uh, stenosis in the probably the prox LAD because it is coming before the first septal perforator. Okay, so the, this is the, yeah, the LAD lesion is ulcerated, looks like ulcerated flux. Yeah. yeah, so this is the left side and this is the right side. And yeah. so basically, the right was totally occluded and it was stented out. Yeah. But it is three facet disease, right? So, so that stenosis can explain the lateral LST depression, right? In the circumflex. Yeah. Okay. Can I add something, sir? Sure. Look at the heart. And if you uh, look at this, heart is like this. The inferior wall is like this, oblique. And actually, one APL is opposite to the inferior wall because the heart lies obliquely. And the anterior depression, actually not the major change, is actually the posterior wall, if it's involved somehow, if it is ischemic, then you get the anterior changes. Otherwise, no. Okay, thank you. So this one. Uh, Dr. Rahman. Dr. Mohammad Shazidur Rahman, your interpretation of the CV. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Dr. Shadid, go on. So while he's thinking, let me tell you some uh, comments Salaam. from Dr. Shahabuddin Rahimutullah. Rahimutullah, you know him. Yes. 
god of godfather of myocardial viability so kim eagle and shahabuddin rahmatullah they were teaching ekgs in a board review course long time ago and i still remember shahabuddin rahmatullah said okay i'm going to show you the ekg no comments no call no fight this is it i don't care what you think this is what the board wants <laughs> so yes. because ekg is very important because all cardiologists they become very emotional about ekg interpretation i actually take it very very lightly i said okay read the obvious and manage the patient exactly dr shahidul yes, sir can you make comments yes yes sir this is a good lead ecg showing heart rate about 74 beats per minute rhythm is sinus qrs duration normal pr interval normal and st elevation is seen in one avl and v1 to v3 so my this is a interpretation is this is acute st elevated mi anteroceptor okay uh, dr khondokar asad zaman khondokar asad you want to me again hear you very clearly thank you very much okay uh, you already mentioned a lot of points here but another important issue is you can see here there is elevations in one avl also which should be included in this uh, diagnosis as well as the anterior lateral mi may be an important issue and second issue is there is a also the st depressions in lead to as well as avf so uh, it should make some differential diagnosis like so uh, whether it may be a case of even pericarditis acute pericarditis may be the differential there in this cases i think professor habis sir yes this side okay so um when when you talk about mitral stenosis the cause is rheumatic fever rheumatic fever three times there are some instances in medicine where differential is good to entertain but that should be entertained last so i would not entertain the pericarditis here because this is a very important issue not to entertain pericarditis in this but there is lead one in avl so this is whether this is just anteroceptal or it is just anterolateral that is the issue and i would call it not only injury pattern i would call it also recent mi because you can see the q wave appearing in v1 v2 so this is and then rhythm wise it is sinus and this is looks like an acute extensive anterolateral mi and and another important thing that which is very in, interesting to me actually more interesting than the st elevation that look at the v4 this is almost angle wise this is like a d winters if you don't look at nothing but there is v4 v5 v6 all similar like in v4 it is the, the suggestive of lad disease probably mid to distal but here it looks like prox lad more likely but it's very extensive and i don't know rofik bhai but this is our observation and this is reported also that the more the st elevation and looking like you know almost like shark fin these patients are very vulnerable for b fever arrest so if you don't act quickly and revascularize them or do something this may go into disaster and another important thing is the mechanical problem so this may go into soon uh, uh, the electrical instability and also mechanical instability so this is very important to recognize that this is not just a 50 year old with uncomplicated inferior this is a massive time bomb that we are setting so think i can add no. can i add I, yeah sure please do then i will disagree I, with hafiz <laughs> yeah this is the this is is definitely is a classical anterior mi but probably according to the book definition it is not interoceptal mi because st is elevated in lead one and adl also but the st is not elevated in v5 v6 one thing is that if you look at this ecg this ecg is very recent you look at the v4 this v4 do not have any does not have any st elevation and this is a tall peak t wave it is very angry looking t wave so tall peak t that means hyper acute t is remaining so it is very recent and another thing is that this ecg it looks like 
this is a v1 is a very decisive uh, lead in the interior by uh, my uh, mi interpretation if in v1 in the classical teaching if the st elevation is more than 2.5 mm in v1 it indicates proximal led occlusion possibly is before the septal one by, by, by branch so if you look at the v1 the st elevation is more than 2.5 mm so it indicates that the patient has got anterior mi and possibly it is due to occlusion of the proximal led uh, proximal led occlusion okay. well, thank you so I, mean, I have to disagree with hafiz always <laughs> so, I, I mean sure i mean if i look at lead 1 and v2 i have the right to think of pericarditis but then he gave my answer away because the v4 that t wave looks terrible that doesn't fit in so sure i mean we can always keep those in mind and we have to keep those in mind because then when we have those borderline cases we may get into trouble but the v4 everybody is pointing out that v4 t wave is really ugly looking and that's it's that's so big, to add to add more if you look at roy by one second this one if you look at the avr it does not tell you with the diagnosis of pericarditis there is no yes. st depression in avr so it those goes against the diagnosis of uh, yeah. pericarditis actually another thing is, the, is that the, when the AVR, one important one important thing is that when st elevation is lead oriented specific lead oriented that means it's only in the anterior leads if there is any st elevation in inferior leads then we can guess that may have pericarditis but it is this is it does not confirm anyway with pericarditis you are just looking at the and otherwise the patient don't have any tachycardia also in pericarditis tachycardia is then recently is always very uh, uh, remarkable and avr also is very remarkable so this avr does not uh, to say that this is a uh, patient with pericarditis can i can i Yeah. So now I... you know why I said about Dr. Shahabuddin Rahmatullah's story. <laughs> uh, what the, what the, go ahead. So, Rovik, I want to add the yes. PR PR segment in AVR is typically elevated. Yes. yes. And the PR is depressed in two three AVF. Now, this argument about localization in the in the post op period we can see localized pericarditis. and that can be sometimes yes, is correct so so if it is the clinical setting is important because just that you are seeing st elevation in the localized area does not mean that this is mi because it can be localized pericarditis so we need to be yeah. careful about that this uh, vr this is not only the t is ugly looking and hyper acute but look at the angle that angle is also very suggestive of lad disease we call that the d winter sign so all in totality this is extensive anterior anterolateral mi for those who wanted to say but, something but hafiz but by definition by definition classically it is not d winter because d winter by definition the origin of the the upward stroke of the toa must be below the baseline but that, this one yeah. is not below the baseline it is at the baseline that's why i say it looks like d winter but it is classical definition it is not d winter d And winter the origin of the t was below the baseline you notice that i said is almost d winter almost, almost, almost yeah and and you don't entertain d winters when you have already classical yes. can can i add sir already also only reserved for when there is no st elevation And that's sure. why I clearly said that if it is only sign in there you need to think about that and okay. hyperkalemia is always another uh, differential and i will show you the ekg about d winter and hyperkalemia sir but can... only thing is that only one sign indicates that it is not a hyperkalemia in hyperkalemia the t wave is always broad is very narrow and very thick but this one is a broad base uh, t wave so broad base t wave is very unlikely in hyperkalemia yes yeah. it is in the differential the important thing is in case of st elevation mi either inferior or the anterior look at the reciprocal change in case of anterior mi you are going to have st depression in inferior leaves if that is present is unlikely very unlikely to be pericarditis again st elevation associated with q waves as we are seeing in v1 v2 also in 1 avl 
this cross out actually pericarditis. The point is, what about the uh, non-involvement of the five and six leaves? Probably the posterior lateral branch, when branches are supplying that part of the heart. That's why it's spared. Okay. So can we move on? Yes, sir, we can go for the next one, sir. Okay, so look at the right coronary artery. As Wadud mentioned, it's a huge, big right coronary artery. And Wadud is absolutely right that the right coronary, I took two pictures. So you can see the lateral part is a pretty big right coronary artery. And this is the left. Um, the LED is occluded and then after stenting. So thank you. So we have got Dr. Abdullah Mamun. Dr. Mamun. Comments, sir. Walaikum salam. Can you make some comments on this CCV? Uh, the, uh, this 12 ECG with normal calibration and normal speed uh, show, uh, shows a uh, rate is about. Uh, that is uh, more than 150, uh, 150 bits per minute. Uh, POF is absent, uh, but uh, rhythm, is, uh, rhythm is regular. Uh, QRS, uh, is, uh, uh, QRS duration is uh, narrow. That is um, uh, uh, 40, uh, 40 millisecond. And uh, there is uh, no axis uh, devi deviation. And uh, P, uh, POF is also, uh, uh, there is also C2, uh, C2R in V1 and C2S in inferior leaves and uh, STT change in uh, 2, 3, AVF also in 1 and uh, also in uh, um, V4, V5 and V6. Um, so my... Uh, this diagnosis is uh, this is a narrow complex tachycardia, possibly uh, supraventricular tachycardia. Thank you, Mamun. Thank you very much. May I request Professor M. Atharali? Atharali, sir, please. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, thanks for excellent description and nice interpretation. Actually, has followed all the sequence we want to teach. That is, has described the rate. Rhythm he has told that is the uh, regular. I think uh, rhythm should be supraventricular regular. He can tell supraventricular regular as it is narrow complex. So it is supposed to be supraventricular and regular. Uh, then uh, QRS complex he has already mentioned the narrow. And finally, regular narrow complex tachycardia, supraventricular in origin. And he has got some points in favor of the AVNRT. That is his point that that is a P priming in V1 and pseudo AC in lead 2, 3 AVF. So I think his diagnosis is correct. That is narrow complex supraventricular tachycardia and possibly AVNRT. Thank you, sir. Rafik, sir, do you want to uh, add no. something? Rafik, why? Yeah. Rafik, why? Yeah. yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. It's a, it's a, I agree with uh, Dr. Atahar. This patient has got this uh, pseudo R and pseudo S in lead to lead PM and V1. But only thing is that so in V4, V5, V6, in any form of supraventricular tachycardia, if there is ST depression in V4, V5, V6, it goes in favor of AV, 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 AVRT. As a, so he has got some uh, uh, points in favor of AVRT also, because ST depression in V4, V5, V6 during a narrow complex tachycardia in AVNRT is very unusual. I, I like to add uh, another point with uh, uh, Professor Varan Chakraborty. Uh, if we look at the uh, bottom strip, there is electrical alter alternation. Yes, some alternation. And, uh, that correct. goes more favor with the, the concealed type of uh, pathway. Uh, ventricular pre excitation is there. Yep. Sure, thank you. So the, the ST depression sure can be. AVRT, but it can also be rate dependent because it's a 75 year old Maybe. man with a heart. Yes, yes, yes. But this, this wave in V1 is important. Now, 
to do it can, also be, it can also be an RSR pattern in the base. So what I do, I unfortunately today, I don't have the sinus rhythm ECG on this patient. I didn't have time to put it on. But if I can find the ECG after conversion, and then we don't see this one after conversion, then it is 100% AVNRT. If this R wave is gone in after conversion to sinus rhythm, then we definitely know this is a retrograde P wave, which is within 80 milliseconds of the QRS complex. Any retrograde P wave, 80 milliseconds before or after the QRS complex is more or less AVNRT. So um, that's about it. Thank you. So, Rovik, by the issue is about when there is an EKG like this, it is an EP issue. So I usually don't step into the EP issues, but I look at the ST segment depression, right? So I look at the RP interval. So long RP, short RP, and go through the differential and look at the patient. ST changes will not determine whether this is AVRT or AVNRT. The, 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 we can't interpret that way. The question is, in addition to the arrhythmias, whether there is any underlying coronary disease, that sometimes becomes an issue. And particularly in our emergency room, there's AVR, ST elevation, ST depression, they call for a STEMI activation. So we, 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 we need to be careful about over-interpretation in the presence of SVT. So, so that, can, that can be a compounding issue. I tell them, do not read this ST elevation in AVR and ST depression and overly call it. But the clinical context is important and we'll have to think about that. If this is a 32 year old female coming with this, don't call it a STEMI. Uh, then deal with the uh, arrhythmias and then go for that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next one. Dr. Hiru Al Amin. Dr. Hiru Al Amin. Can you make some comments? Sir, Assalamu Alaikum, sir. Uh, this is a uh, 12 bit ECG uh, with uh, normal uh, calibration. Uh, rate is uh, about 190 bit per minute. And uh, there is uh, right axis deviation. And QRS is more than 120 millisecond. That is white QRS complex. And uh, there is absent of there is a occasional a capture bit is present more, more marked in the z2 and uh, there is a ventricular concordance is also present so uh, and most likely this is a ecg white complex was uh, white complex tachycardia most likely ventricular tachycardia thank you dr hiru uh, dr jamil bhai you want to make some comment on it Dr. Abdullah Jamin. Yes. Uh, most of the points he mentioned, all right. Um, it's more favor in favor of uh, ventricular tachycardia. And there is some uh, in, uh, fusion bit like things are there. Maybe uh, preceded by one P wave in the bottom strip. So one, two, three, four, five. And near the middle of the strip, and uh, five bits after that. It's more, most you. likely it's uh, VT, what he's Thank mentioned. You. So, Rubik, 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 can I add something? Sure. Rubik, Rubik, this one is definitely is the broad complex tachycardia. And we know that 80% of the broad complex tachycardia is VT, and only other things are very less. But even then, in this ECG, there are some signs, those goes in favor of SVT with a variancy. That's why I want to tell something, so what is that one? Because this ECG, what are the, what are the findings goes in favor of VT? VT is very broad complex. That means in a RBB morphology, the QRS complex is more than 140 millisecond. That means it goes in favor of VT. Another thing is that concordance. If you look at the concordance, all the QRS complexes from V1 to VC, okay. they're upright. So this one is concordance. Okay. Them. But this concordance is positive concordance. Positive concordance is not sine qua non with VT, but if it is negative concordance, it goes very much in favor of VT. But if it is positive concordance, it may be due to abundancy and with accessory pathway, particularly in the left posterior pathway, it can be that this type of key. Another thing, 
Another thing is the cancer diagnosis. Usually, this but this one is associated with right axis deviation. And another important thing which goes against VT, look at the morphology of the B1. Look at the B1. If you look at the V1, if there's a classical teaching, if in the V1, if the QRS complex is then the left one, that means the BDS sign right, it goes in favor of SVT with evidence. But if the left one is bigger than the right one, it goes in favor. That is Marriott sign also. So all the things goes in favor of yeah, SVT with evidence. So possibly it is VD, but it has got, this ECG has got several signs which goes in favor of SVT with evidence. And particularly the morphology of the QRS complex in right uh, on in V1, where the right sided or the right peak is a, a bigger than that of the left peak. That means the VDS sign is positive. So it was go, it goes in favor of aberrancy. So it may be VT, but it has got some criteria in favor of SVT with aberrancy also. Warren, what okay. is your diagnosis? It's my diagnosis. <laughs> Yes, sir. But <laughs> only thing is that this keyword is complex is very, diagnosis? very wide. That's why I'm in favor of VT. Otherwise, I could say that this one is SVT with evidence and left posterior accessory pathway. That's giving rise to that. But Hafiz does not believe in Marriott sign because this one is Marriott sign. If Marriott sign is correct, then it is SVT with evidence. No, no. I, I but, do not. But, but uh, a patient with this, like this, uh, one teaching is treated as VT. Definitely, standard teaching uh, is BT because 80% of the part complex VT as has because VT. this might harm the patient. But uh, if the patient patient is hemodynamically stable, then we can think of other things. <laughs> Definitely, because all broad complex tachycardia should be regarded as VT until proved otherwise. Yes. So when I I face this, I tell the resident or fellows, don't get intimidated. You can pray, pray for please pass out. I can shut you out. <laughs> 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 so, I'm going to tell you, I'm sure Rovik Bhai is going to go through the organized way of describing what is in favor of VT, what is in favor of white yeah, complex. Teaching class, that's what I'm telling that one. Otherwise, for me also, it is VT. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to know. So the, uh, the, the, uh, in the board exam, it is one thing. In practice, it is another thing. You notice that Rovik Bhai has taken everything out from this EKG. No clinical info. <laughs> See that? <laughs> okay, Rafik, right. Rafik, sir, please, you come. So, no, I left the information, one information that to confuse everybody because this is a 34 yes. year old female. And what is that? <laughs> I left it on purpose. Few things a white QRS tachycardia. And <clears throat> so we look at, and it is right bundle morphology by V1 but not by V6. So if it happened that it is a right bundle aberration, lead one, you can see R followed by S, but I should have seen also RS pattern in V6, which did not. So it is not one of those typical right bundle aberration. Concordance goes in favor of VT. Second will be QR duration as Boren mentioned, that right bundle more than 140 millisecond duration, left bundle more than 160 duration supports VT. This QRS was 220 millisecond. So this was VT. This is a 34 year old female who came to the hospital with fever. And then she did this in the hospital. And it, we shocked her out. And then what she had, she had bidirectional ventricular tachycardia. And I, unfortunately I did not put it to this to make it simple. Um, it, uh, basically, what we found, we did EP study, which came by her LV function as normal, coronaries mm -hmm. were normal. This and we could not use any VT. And we felt that it was catecholaminergic like polymorphic mm -hmm. ventricular attack, CPVT, because we had actually classic um, bidirectional VT. There were QRS complex, one positive, one negative, one positive, one negative. So this was one of those cases. Um, thank you. Thank you for all the input. But for the audience and the younger doctors, um, please take the message from all our confusing discussion that if you think white QRS complex, if you can't diagnose anything, call it VT. 
no question because even if it is SVT in operation and you shock the patient, you have saved the life of the patient. But then we look, go to the algorithm, concordance in this case was the pointer towards the VT diagnosis. Um, and this is, I have nothing to do with it, Dr. Um, uh, sorry, in the previous CC, yeah. Topic, sir. Yes. In the previous CC, we, in each and every upstroke of the QRS complex, there is a notch. In some areas, there is notch, some, some areas, there is no notch. Does it indicate AB dissociation? Oh, you know, I normally try to find a, a P wave, but Hafi said I always find something. I try to find, but I could not. There is something, but the problem is, that if you see here, there is something, yes, yes. there is something, but I have to find something very consistent and regular because there is so many notches. I just didn't want to make any comment and I did not have any intracardiac on this. So when I, when I try to identify um, um, a, a P wave, I have to confirm with another lead. At this rate, it becomes almost impossible to diagnose AV dissociation unless it is very, very clear P wave. Thank you, sir. Pardon, sir. Uh, I like to know the bidirectional features. Uh, what are the features of bidirectional features? Is there any here? Uh, no, not in this ECG. This patient had another ECG subsequently on monitor that you will see the VT, one QRS is positive, other QRS is negative. And you see it in two conditions. One is CPVT, sometimes in digital is toxicity. You can see bidirectional VT. And probably the mechanism is same. It is due to calcium overload. So the mechanism of VT is similar. Um, and it's a calcium kind dependent VT. And next time I'll, I'll bring those ECGs for you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, sir. Yeah. Next one. Uh, may I request Lieutenant Colonel Nijamul Hussain Saudagar. Colonel Nijamul Hussain Saudagar. Can you make some comments on this ECG? Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, it is 12 bleed ECG with standard normal standardization and calibration having uh, rate is 74 bit per minute sinus rhythm sinus P wave are tall peaked QRS morphology is RSR pattern and there is a left axis deviation and there is uh, so considering all these, my clinical impression is uh, a P pulmonary with RBB with right axis deviation, and there is uh, features of RB hypertrophy also. So, my clinical diagnosis, considering the clinical scenario, forty years old female, it could be atrial septal defect, maybe uh, most likely second term type ASD with, uh, but uh, RB pulmonary hypertension. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Govindo Paul, do you want to make some comment? Dr. Yes, Govindo. Uh, uh, all the, uh, some of the points uh, I'd like to add here. Uh, here, uh, V1 is uh, RSR pattern, RBB morphology, and V6 also, uh, uh, V5 uh, uh, and V6 also shows uh, LBB morphology and strain pattern T inversion. And PR interval seems to be prolonged. And uh, and uh, a little bit wide QRS complex. So in that case, here the RBB and LBB morphology, I like to or mention here or comments here the intraventricular conduction delay and uh, right atrial enlargement uh, up to this. Okay.
Thank you. Dr. Naruma, you see your case. Make some so comments. This one, can I make some comment? Sir, uh, let Dr. Naruma say a few words, then he will make the final comments. Dr. Naruma, please. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, the, according to ECG, the finding that told uh, is uh, absolutely okay that uh, the P pulmonary, that means that uh, um, peer pressure is high and also the, it can also indicate that RA is enlarged and uh, it also, uh, if we correlate with the uh, clinical findings that uh, patient is 14 years female uh, with shortness of breath and palp palpitation and white split uh, uh, second heart sound. And uh, there is uh, two murmur in pulmonary area. There is systolic murmur and there is a uh, pan systolic murmur in the left lower sternal area. I'm not going the details of the ECG finding, but it is giving a clue that pan systolic murmur in the left lower sternal area. It indicate uh, one thing that uh, the tricuspid regurgitation is there and uh, which also we are finding in ECG that P is tall. And uh, another important thing, PR is prolonged, and it indicates that in that Govinda that told that interventricular conduction delay, that also happening in this uh, case of patient, and uh, there is a complete RBB. The QRS complex is more than 120 millisecond, and uh, there is RVH is present, and uh, LV forces is uh, also short. Uh, LV forces is not uh, overmarked, so. From here, we can tell it at uh, ASD secondum with severe pulmonary hypertension, or we can also tell that it can be a case of uh, Epstein anomaly, because in case of Epstein anomaly, the RA is enlarged, and uh, there may be in conduction delay, and there is RA, uh, that actualized RA, there is volume overload, so there may be, there is a PR prolonged conduction is uh, malformed, it, uh, it goes downwards. And uh, so we are getting that PR prolong. And uh, that RBB is also we are getting because uh, there is RB forces. And uh, from this, we can tell that this uh, patient has uh, uh, not RVOT obstruction. This is a uh, severe RVH and uh, PA pressure is high. That's all. Thank you. Professor Warren Sukru with sir. <laughs> This TCG, in fact, everybody is in favor of second name type of ASD, is it? So problem is that if this patient, this patient has got RBB and P pulmonary and PR interval is prolonged. In classical testing, if it is ASD, that ASD should be at this patient has got a pansystolic murmur in the lower sternal edge. Why it is not prime M type of ASD? Because prime M type of ASD is usually give rise to this RBB pattern along with the prolonged PR interval. Only thing is lacking, there is no profound left axis deviation. The trio of diagnosis, the prime, prime type of ASD is this RBB, then the prolonged PR interval along with left axis deviation. Except the left axis deviation, this ECG goes in favor of my diagnosis, the patient's age is only 14, has got a pan-systolic murmur. So RBB with prolonged PR interval with P pulmonary goes in favor of diagnosis of prime MASD. But if you look at the, the RBB pattern, this RBB pattern is not normal. This is called atypical RBB pattern. And this atypical RBB pattern, and along with this tall V2, look at the V2. V2, usually the Epstein anomaly give rise to Himalayan P wave in the V2. What does it mean, Himalayan P? Himalayan P means if the P wave amplitude is more than five millimeter in V2, it goes in favor of Himalayan P wave. And this Himalayan P wave is usually present in Epstein anomaly, tricuspid atresia. But it is 14 years, tricuspid atresia is very, very unlikely. So there's features of the Epstein anomaly. Another thing goes in favor of Epstein's anomaly. If you look at the, see the beginning of the QRS complex, there is some suggestion of the delta wave also. We know that this Epstein's anomaly, more than 42% goes, are, are associated with ASD, and almost 25% has got the pre-excitation syndrome. So if we all together take in consideration, his, her pen systolic murmur, atypical RBB, prolonged pain interval, P pulmonary, it, everything goes in favor of Epstein's anomaly. So my diagnosis rises in two of the, as I did not see the patient clinically, either it is a septum primum type of HD or it is an Epstein's anomaly. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, in fact, we are running out of time. 
we we should con uh, uh, stop here we'll go move on to our next part of the and i we can just Aru. quick comment yes sir Please. when i first saw this ecg because i don't deal with congenital heart disease one of the feature of epstein is two qrs complex look at vis5 there are two qrs complexes look at v1 the sharp complex looked like QRS, second one looks like T, but that's another QRS complex. So two, this is very pathognomonic idea. I found out that very much pathognomonic of Epstein anomaly, that if you look suddenly at the ECG looks like, and, and Govinda mentioned that it looks like left bundle, but actually what happened, the terminal part of the R wave is kind of bizarre S wave is, is the QRS complex. That's actually the QR, part of the QRS complex. So that's the typical part for a tall P wave, can be first degree AV block and then looks like two QRS complexes. Thank you. This was a wonderful ECG, Dr. Naroma. Thank you for sharing this. Sir, I'd like to uh, differ with um, uh, Baranda. Thank you, sir. There is no PH. The initial part is very sharp and uh, there is no delta wave or something like that. Again, the PR interval is prolonged rather than short. So all this point goes against. But if, the, if the patient has got Epstein's anomaly, the PR Where interval the will not be short if, if because the, that's the only thing I I I tell you theoretically. Let me finish. Epstein anomaly has has a, a association with uh, pre excitation, but not all Epstein anomaly patient yeah. has pre excitation. This is the ECG. No, only twenty five percent. Only twenty five percent. Yes. yes, yes. And this is this is only 25 percent. But only the problem is that in the Epstein's anomaly, the deceptal cast of the tricuspid valve is driven by, by distally. That's why it produces the pro anatomical problem in the central fibrous structure. That's why the PR interval cannot be short. But so there the, are a lot of patients with short PR interval with pre excitation. Yes, can can. In Epstein. Uh, 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 Sir, uh, uh, comment, sir. Uh, uh, if, uh, uh, right ventricular hypertrophy in case of Epstein anomaly, usually rudimentary RV. So, why voltage B2, uh, taller in B2 and also uh, B1? Why? It is, it is due to this bizarre pattern has been explained in Epstein anomaly. This is this is not due to RV overload. Oh, sorry, sorry, this RV hypertrophy. It is due to right bundle, is right, conduction defect in the right bundle. This is big Z QRS complex is due to this uh, contraction delay. It's, it is not the hypertrophy. Yeah. Thank so, you. I have a quick add on that the S, the in abstains, this question is set up for suggestion that this is abstains until proven otherwise. But the S1 is split, not S2 in abstains. In abstains, because the first sound is because of the closure of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. And normally we don't see the first heart sound is split. In abstains, there is M1, T1 is split. First heart sound is split. That's a very characteristic of Thank abstain. you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Rafik, sir, thank you very much for uh, showing us the ECG. Now, uh, this is the next part of our session. We are going to declare the winners of the ECG quiz. And uh, Dr. Tushar, Tushar, can you declare the winners, results of the quiz? Dr. Tushar, please. Tushar, are you with us? Firoz, you can show the result. If Tushar I, is not Firoz, you go ahead. Vishal, where are you? Sir, I'm here, but the signal is not coming. Am, am I audible, sir? Hey, you yes. are audible. Now you can go for okay, it. Okay. okay. Kamal Bhai, can you please share the uh, result? We have, uh, we first we have decided to uh, announce 10 winners, but interestingly, we have 17 winners of this ECG quiz. A majority of the, there are seven participants, eight participants who answered correctly nine questions and nine participants who answered eight questions properly. So we decided okay, not to. Yes, sir.
कमल शाह अपनी पार्टिसिपेंट्स who answered eight and nine questions properly who so, are all the participants for bangladesh or any uh, no there was an uh, one one participant from singapore also and uh, rest of the participants were for bangladesh and uh, how many participants from nepal <laughs> i think uh, there was non i think the, they didn't have information so yes we we shared the information through facebook a page or facebook page but uh, i think uh, many participants uh, were a bit deceived by the pattern we said to answer so we are trying to encourage our participants to answer in the particular form format so, so i mean many of the participants answered answered the questions but the uh, format was not uh, uh, they were not giving the answer in formatted way so only those who gave it the answers in formatted way we have taken those answers how many actually answered yes, actually 56 56 participants answered according to the format yes yes sir this is the uh, we are sharing the result now so uh, this was the 56 we have the participants who answered in a, a formatted way and among the 17 was the winners the first eight answered nine questions properly and the last nine answered eight questions properly can you, can you read the names of them yes sir yes sir so uh, the first one is dr mohammad wasik faisal then dr mustaq tazir dr abk bashiruddin dr nurul islam dr buddhid danguli dr mukul chandra paul dr ratan dash dr mohammad hirwal amin dr abu naim mahmud hasan dr shomen dash dr mohammad shahzadur rahman dr abdullah al mamun dr mohammad nizamul hasan shaudagar Dr. Mohammad Hasan Ur Rahman, Dr. Kanta Dash, Dr. Tahmina Sultana, and last one, Dr. Kazi Fahim Mahmud uh, from the uh, ECG study group. We congratulate all the winners of this ECG quiz. I request Wadul sir to say uh, few things about the quiz and the winners and the overall participation. Wadul sir. A good evening, everybody. actually our quiz attempted to enforce the idea of system and encourage to join with us in this contest in a formatted way if you practice the same thing in your daily life it will become part of your habit and then the chances of missing out important piece of information will be much low and the chance of giving the proper decision will be much higher i really congratulate all the participants not only the winners and i heartily congratulate all the winners we are really lucky to have you all with us our journey our endeavor all of our uh, hard work actually paid off when you answer it so nicely thank you everybody thank you uh, uh, review can you show the uh, slide with the book uh, professor varun chakravarti sir will be it will be given to our winner 
units. This is the book, textbook of basic and advanced electrocardiography written by Professor Boren Chakraborty. And every winner will get one of these books. And congratulations to every winner and also for all the participants. Now, um, may I request Professor Boren Chakraborty, sir, to say a few words about today's session and the- Seven, may I interfere? Uh, yes. Very good book and very uh, readable, very readable book. Thank you, I sir. also already got it. Okay. With the okay. Warren, Dr. Burti, sir, please. Thank you, sir. Thank so you, can, you, can you stop sharing the book the slides? Ah, yes. Okay. So, thank you, everybody. So, particularly Dr. Hafiz and Rafiq Bhai from abroad. So, it's, it was a very interesting session. And every time I contradicted, I know it this one, but even then I contradicted. Only to share that one, that these things can happen. So, I, uh, the, the, my book, the book written by me has been given to everybody. And this book, I handed over to Dr. Orun Maski in uh, India when it was first published last year. So far, I can remember. Can you remember, Orun? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was very yeah, good. I read the book. But a lot of, lot of our participants are asking whether we can get that book. They are written yeah. in chat box. It is also so you'll have to provide. <laughs> it is published from Nepal also. Nepal also. It simultaneously published from India, London, United States, and so also from Nepal. Four countries simultaneously. So this is a big book, particularly those who will do the post graduation. This book has got two parts because 17 participants already own the book. I tell the online the gist what to do it. If you want to pass the FCPS, but you will have to go through all the way. If you do want to do the MD in cardiology, you'll have to go through all the way. But those who are MBBS students only put because this every chapter has got two sessions. One is the details, another one in summary. If you want to recapitulate within one day, even you can recapitulate all the ECG within one day also. If you are an MBBS student, read the summary part only. If you are a post graduate student, you'll have to know way, you'll have to know everything. So you'll have to know the explanation of the waves. So if you if you want to read it, I think Dr. <laughs> what you said, I tried my level best to make it very up to date. And only one is, is, is um, uh, uh, regarding this book. I want to tell uh, add one thing: what ECG books we get? We get the ECG books. The writers usually do they summarize all the old books. But in this ECG, you will get that because I take in consideration two journal. One is American Journal of Emergency Medicine. Another one is electro, the Journal of Electrocardiography. And I summarized the, many new things. I did not tell it today because in ASD, there are so many new things, but I did not tell it. Either. I summarized all the things in the text also. If you get time, that is good. <laughs> then if you read it and if you find it, it is worthy, then my uh, all the effort, uh, I think it will be okay. <laughs> so otherwise everything will go in vain. Thank you, Thank Dr. Rofikbhai and Dr. Hafiz again. For participating in the Bangladeshi doctor. Where we can get it in Bangladesh? In Dhaka. So all the cardiologists have got it. I didn't. Oh, it is on the, with the Beximco. Beximco is giving it to all the cardiologists. So far, I, I know they have all cardiologists. <laughs> Jamil, it is assured that you will get it and you will get okay, a big bottle also. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, So, so what would why? Yes. What would why? Yes. You should do one thing. From ACG study group, you will have to give books to our residents who are regular in this class. That yeah. would be great. Okay, we will get it. We are, we are planning for that. Oh, yeah. the, 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 this is the Beximco's problem. <laughs> they will provide it. We are okay. say something. <laughs> but Beximco is supporting us in this program no. very well. So yeah. this book is a little bit expensive. We will also read Jamil so Bhai. The, the Saira should provide everybody. Saira, is it? <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, of course. Nada, can you hear it or not? Is it yes, sir, yes. <laughs> she is yes. Thank, Thank you, Varun Chakravarti sir. Uh, definitely will be benefited from your book. And congratulations for writing such a beautiful book. Now uh, it's time for concluding the session. May I request Professor M. Atar Ali sir to conclude the session? Uh, uh, sir, please, I want to have some comment from Rafiq sir regarding the quiz and everything. Uh, sir is not... Uh, yeah. Rafiq sir... sir Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, this is a wonderful forum. I enjoy joining it. Um, it's always my pleasure. And then I'm glad that participants are answering. I'm glad that the 56 people answered. Um, and that's the question. I mean, uh, we expect that you look at it uh, systematically, continue doing it, and in the process, whatever we can do to 
enhance your knowledge, please, please let us know. Um, it's always a pleasure. I learn a lot by learning, especially arguing with Hafiz. He makes me think um, all the time. Hafiz sir is also with us. Hafiz sir, you, do you want to make any comment? Do you want to contradict with sir, Rohit sir? I don't have any comment. Hafiz sir, please. No, I don't have any comment. I uh, I really thank all those who uh, participated. Uh, this program is successful because you participated. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Athar, sir. Athar, bhai, please. So, thank you, Biroz, and uh, particularly to Rofi, sir, sir. Our target is okay. Particularly, uh, possibly our target is successful. Particularly, your presence and Hafiz Bhai's presence makes the session very interesting and everybody enjoys it. And our students are practicing in the way what you are teaching, that is systematically read, read them like this. And this is the format actually we have presented in the quiz and they followed the format and they are practicing it. So our mission is successful. And most of the participants are junior, sir. And I think, uh, most are in the, uh, some of the students are in the actually medical students, even not yet passed the MBBS course. They have also participated in this session. So this was our target, not the seniors to actually faculties participate in the quiz. So in this context, actually this was our mission and it is successful, I think. I like to congratulate all the participants who participate in the quiz contest, contest and particularly those 17 winners. So congratulations to all and particularly we are grateful to Rofik sir and Hafiz Bhai and today, particularly the Boren sir to make the program very, very successful and enjoyable. Thank you, Boren sir. We want to every day. Please also. Thank you. Thank you. Atha, sir, any, any comment about the next session? Next, next session. Yes, sir. There is a declaration in next Saturday, sir. Actually, um, there will be a talk from USA, Dr. Fisher, that is adult congenital heart disease, sir. Rofik sir. Actually, yeah. the next Saturday he will be the speaker, sir. That is adult congenital heart disease. And uh, I will also request Boren sir to be present on the session. I will uh, send you the link and the invitation. Boren sir. Can you make sure Dr. Naruma is there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She'll be, she'll be sir. As for also, Benedict Cardolosi will be invited as a faculty in that day. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we can conclude the session. Uh, see you all on next Saturday. Thank you for joining us. And, and, uh, we must, uh, we must uh, congratulate thank the Big Zimco team, particularly Sai Rosh and Ribu and the Kamal. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, Means a lot. I have to reach Jamil Bhai. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> yes, sir. All cardiologists get the book. <laughs> okay, sir. I, I will make sure that Jamil sir gets one. Of there course. No, no, no. Shall Actually, <laughs> Sir, we are giving the uh, books as a prize, but we are also waiting for your books, sir. <laughs> so, Rivu, you should get books to our guys also. Nepal, sir. Nepal. We'll have to sir. send. I'll send the name. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. 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 Thank you send to Rivu. Rivu will arrange. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We'll take from down. <laughs> Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, sir. Good night, everybody. Assalamu alaikum and good night.